All right, this question is really just a good way to learn how to use a frequency chart to find a median. We don't wanna list all these numbers out, that's gonna get us in trouble. We also don't wanna just look at it and, and kind of think about like, oh, what's the middle row? Because that's not how this works. The frequencies are not evenly distributed. So the middle row won't necessarily be the, the middle of the set. So there are two ways to do it. One is shorter, but I don't know, I feel like people tend to mess it up. But let me, let me explain and, and I'll show you the long way as well, which I also don't think is that bad. Uh, nine, for a certain computer game, individuals receive an integer score that ranges from two through 10. The table below shows the frequency distribution of the scores of the nine players in group A and the 11 players in group B. So that's good for us. Odd numbered sets, really good when we want medians. So now the median of the scores for group B is how much greater than the median of the scores for group A. So um, what we could do is recognize that let's say for uh, set B, where we have 11 people, there's going to be a middle number, and we know kind of like what that number is in the list, right? There's the first number, second number, third number, whatever. We know that if we have 11, we are going to have five numbers to the left of our median and five numbers to the right of our median. So our median is the sixth number, no matter which way we count it. Right, so there are some formulas where you take the number in the median, you add one, divide by two, or whatever. But I think that that's confusing because then, depending on whether we have an odd or an even set, that formula kind of changes. Instead, I think it's better to think of it as like, if the what's the middle, how many are, are, are on each side, then we can kind of count to that middle. So I would want to count to the sixth number, right? So there's none in two, so I don't care. None in three, none in four, and then there's six right here. So the sixth number is ironically six. But I could have also gone the other way, right? There's two here, and then this, this gets me to three, right? Because two plus one is three. This gets me to five. So again, the sixth number would be in that row. It doesn't matter which direction we count it from. So the median for B, um, median for B, I don't know where to write this, median of B is six. Now, the longer way involves tally marks, and this is what I'm gonna do for, for group A. Um, basically, just, uh, count from each end and eliminate uh, a number from each side. So we're gonna eliminate one of the twos because there's one of those. So I'm gonna cross that out and I'm gonna have to cross out the nine, right? Cause there's no 10, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just gonna do one and one. So if I do one here from the top, then the next place I have a number is here, but there's three of those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of one of them and make this a two basically. Then I'm gonna get rid of one of the fours and one of the sixes, and now that six is a one and that four is a two, right? Because that's the frequency, right? So I need to eliminate it to get it. So then I can cross at the last remaining four and the last remaining six, and now I only have one number left and it's five. So the median for A is five. So what is the difference? It's one. There you go. So there's no answer choices for this. It's just a, a fill in the blank question. But there you go, that's, that's what we wanna do here. Um, I actually really like the, the kind of like tally marks method or you can, I didn't draw tally marks here, but I, cause most of the things were just a, a one. Um, but basically that's what we're doing is we're just crossing out each individual number as if they were listed in a, in a big list. Like we learned median in school, but we're not going to do that because sometimes the lists get very unmanageable, but we can still kind of treat it like, all right, I'm going to cross out two or three from this side. If I cross out two or three from this side, it balances out. Um, Again, I like that method. If we wanted to do the other method there with the nine players, we would have four, then the median, and then the four, right? So that's a total of nine. So the median there would be the fifth number, and we do the same thing. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? Same thing. Um, now, the, the, the key is, in both of these cases, I was working in the rows, the, the, the columns for the group A and group B, but what I really am interested in is the score. Right, so this is the, the numbers themselves that we're actually thinking about when we're finding the median or if we wanted to find the mean. The other columns are the frequencies, right? So for example, what group A is telling us, um, actually let's do group B since I crossed out a lot of group A. Uh, there's zero twos in group B, there's zero threes in group B, there's zero fours in group B, but there's four fives in group B, there's two sixes in group B, there's two eights in group B, there's a nine and two tens. So we have to think of all those frequencies and take them to, into account. That's why you can't just eliminate the rows and find the middle row. That is in fact one of the most common SAT traps when it comes to medians and frequency charts, is you just ignore the fact that the frequency. 
So we need to think about that. That's very basic. This is a, a harder question, but we are gonna see in uh, other questions where it's just about understanding the basics of a frequency chart. So make sure you always take into account both rows when you're thinking about mean, median, mode, anything for a frequency chart.